and that there's no proof of that. Now we are hearing from the White House, oh yeah, there is a little bit of proof. Kevin Cork now from the White House with more. Hey, Kevin. Boy, is there ever, Neil. I, I'm just going to share part of something we've just received from the uh, White House Press Secretary, Sarah Sanders. It, it is an assessment of the Assad regime's use of chemical weapons, and it is voluminous. We're talking about more than 30 paragraphs long, and as I've been reading through it, Neil, I've been struck by not just the specificity, but the devastating nature of the use of some of these chemical weapons, most notably the, the recent attack in the Duma area, uh, just north of uh, Damascus. It goes on to lay out chapter and verse, not just the use of chemical weapons, but other banned munitions uh, that are banned, certainly in international norms. At the very conclusion, and I think this is the most instructive part, it says the history clearly illustrates the Assad regime's consistent use of chemical weapons. Such use will continue until the cost of the regime of using these weapons outweigh any idea that they may provide military advantages of this, of course, also in cooperation with the uh, DOD press operations officer as well. This is such a devastating blow-by-blow -blow breakdown of not just munition fragments, barrel bombs, chemical weapons, chlorine attacks. It is without refutation, quite frankly, Neil, when you consider how often we have heard these headlines and seen the sort of granular detail that are all listed here. It is a devastating indictment of what has been a murderous regime's use of banned chemical weapons. And so we expect more reaction, as you point out, as we continue our view there at the United Nations Security Council emergency meeting called by the Russians. They are protesting feverishly so, but I don't think they have much of a leg to stand on. That will not, however, as you can well imagine, stop them from protesting loudly, Neil. It's almost as if they anticipated just this response from the Russians, um, yep. that, they, that they would say there's no proof of this, and then along comes this proof. Absolutely right. And part of the strategy, when you think about it from a comm shop perspective, is what you really want to do is not just obviously anticipate what the adversary might decide to do. You want to buffet any argument so that in the secondary, in the tertiary uh, questioning, people say, well, why'd you do this or why didn't you do that? You want to have all your ducks in a row. And what I think I find most effective about this blow by blow, this point by point dissertation by the White House and the Pentagon, is it removes any question about the fact that the Assad regime has absolutely violated international laws repeatedly, most notably to the detriment of the Syrian people, Neil. All right, Kevin Cork, uh, great reporting. Thank you very much. Kevin Cork at the you White know. House. Uh, what does Colonel David Hunt think about this? He's our Fox News military analyst, much, much more than that, of course. But, Colonel, what the White House is saying is uh, we knew this moment was coming. We knew the Russians would attack us for attacking there, and we've got the proof why uh, we did. Yeah, in context, a year, almost a year ago, we threw 48 Tomahawks at an airfield in Syria. Since we did that, there's been between 6 and 12 uh, chemical attacks by Assad on his people. This time, very well coordinated, well executed, uh, pinpoint attack, about 105 missiles, and denigrated their use. The problem, Neil, is these kind of operations, although they look good and they're well executed, aren't effective. They're not going to stop Assad. The only way this is going to happen is if you go after the Russians and Iran, which we're not going to do. Also, this is in, a, in the middle of a war that Syria is about one. We kicked ISIS's ass out of Syria and Iraq, as we should, should have done. But the war in Syria has been won by Syria. And so the context of this is a little bit interesting. I do not think, although as good as an operation it was, it's going to have an effect of stopping chemical attacks. You know, the president seemed to telegraph as much last week before any of this when yeah. he hinted, um, just get out of Syria. Um, what do you make of that and what our position should be now going forward, especially after this? Again, in context, um, as you know, we helped start this thing during the last administration with the Saudis, some intel stuff. We began to try to get Assad out of there and it went upside down on us and everybody else fast. It is, this is now has been won by Russia and Iran and Syria. The Russians got a, a, a port that they've always wanted. Iran's got influence. This, this is a bad situation we cannot get back in the middle of because, based, again, 17 years of war we're still in. We cannot get into this one. You know, Colonel, I'm going to talk to you just the perspective from a soldier here. 
Uh, and you yep. see politicians or, or ambassadors gathering, again, with the best of intentions, we can assume, to keep the world at peace, talking about this, going back and forth. When you were serving, how did you feel about that, either second-guessing actions that were taken, actions that could be taken? What, 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 what importance do you assign to groups like the United Nations? Uh, but, but the soldiers have absolutely no time to think about United Nations or and or politicians. You know, we do what we're told and serve well. One of the reasons that we're still around as a country is because of this phenomenal military, which I remind everybody is less than 1% of the nation. It's an all-volunteer force. But because of the time and the danger and the constant deployments that has been for 17 years, uh, they don't think much of that. They, they don't spend a lot of time. Who does sometimes think about it are the generals in the Pentagon, are those that work in the political offices and the families who have time to watch and consider this. But a soldier deployed is a soldier deployed and is almost apolitical. They've got their own butts to worry about and the people next to them. Yeah, unfortunately, these guys control those butts sometimes. But, Colonel, thank you very much. I always wondered about that. Uh, David Hunt, retired U.S. Army. In the meantime, the former U.S. ambassador to Syria, Ryan Crocker, he served from 1999-2001 for President Clinton and George W. Bush. Sir, very good to have you. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me on. What will come of this United Nations meeting? Well, who knows exactly. I think we, for the reasons that you're uh, uh, reporter just said, I think we're in a good position to uh, uh, really uh, pile on the Russians here. Uh, uh, and also the Iranians. Uh, and I think that is even more important. Uh, Iran um, experienced chemical weapons attack during the Iran Iraq War, 1980 to 1988, uh, a series of them. Uh, uh, the Iranian people just hate the hell out of chemical weapons. Uh, because they've experienced them. So I, I hope we're going to ramp up a, um, a public shame campaign, again, against both the Russians and the Iranians, but particularly the Iranians. Uh, they're, they're vulnerable. And actually now, because of the proof, uh, they're both vulnerable. So I, uh, I, I hope we come out swinging in public. What if we take this latest development as, as a reason to say this agreement that we have with you, Iran, uh, you, you, you've just ripped it up yourself. Uh, if we're going to try to link it to that, uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, have some pretty important conversations with our uh, our traditional allies on that. Uh, the uh, French and the British, of course, uh, were part of the strike. Uh, they're also part of the uh, the Iran agreement. So uh, whatever it is we might want to do, just as like on the strike, uh, uh, I think we want to be sure we are uh, not doing it alone, uh, if we can possibly avoid it. Now, uh, we had argued Ambassador uh, Mission Accomplished, the President did in a tweet, uh, saying that effectively we have quashed Syria's chemical weapons making capability, not totally uh, removed it, but effectively and demonstratively destroying it. Um, but that was an important distinction that was made by a number of officials, what do you think that that it, it we're, they're not quite completely incapacitated here? Uh, well, no, they're not. I, uh, I I thought the administration did a good job on the strike a little over a year ago, making clear that they were sending a message. They were not trying to uh, uh, reduce military capabilities because, of course, uh, we didn't. Uh, now we're saying that uh, yes, we have. Um, maybe we have. Maybe we're quite confident in that. Uh, but again, I would be worried that having taken that position on our part, that it's a real incentive for um, uh, for Bashar to uh, uh, do something else uh, really nasty against his people, uh, uh, chemical or non-chemical. And Neil, there's an important point here. The way this is read in the region, it is us saying, hey, uh, Go ahead and kill your population. Um, you know, knock yourself out. Have a ball. Just don't do it with chemical weapons. Any other kind of weapon, we're, we're down with it. We're cool. Um, uh, that, that's how this is perceived in the region, and uh, that's not doing us any good. That's actually a very good point. Go back to killing people conventional ways. Just don't use the chemical means. The conventional ways kill ten times as many more and have 
but it's the chemical one that gets the attention. That's a very good point. Yeah, and in that area where they were used, uh, uh, civilians had a huge order of magnitude greater than the chemical weapons uh, victims have been killed in the past week or so. And we had no reaction to that. So. No, that's a very good point. Ambassador, thank you. Thank you. All right, I just want to show you what's uh, happening on, on um, your screen. This uh, emergency U.N. meeting has begun. Uh, this is the U.N. Secretary General, I believe, Antonio Guterres, who's speaking right now. I don't know if we're getting an English version. Uh, I want to dip into that. I also want to hear from the Russian ambassador, who we will be hearing from, the one who called this meeting. Uh, Nikki Haley will speak after him. Uh, we're going to be dipping in and out of this, but now again, uh, the U.N. Secretary General on calling this emergency meeting. Mr. President. As Secretary General of the United Nations, it is my duty to remind Member States that there is an obligation, particularly when dealing with matters of peace and security, to act consistently with the Charter of the United Nations and with international law in general. The UN Charter is very clear on these issues. Mr. President, the Security Council has primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. I call on the members of the Security Council to unite and exercise that responsibility. And I urge all members to show restraint in these dangerous circumstances and to avoid any acts that could escalate matters and worsening the suffering of the Syrian people. As I did yesterday, I stress the need to avoid the situation from spiraling out of control. Mr. President, any use of chemical weapons is abhorrent. The suffering it causes is horrendous. I have repeatedly expressed my deep disappointment that the Security Council failed to agree on a dedicated mechanism for effective accountability for the use of chemical weapons in Syria. I urge the Security Council to assume its responsibilities and fill this gap. And I will continue to engage with Member States to help achieve this objective. A lack of accountability emboldens those who would use such weapons by providing them with the reassurance of impunity. And this in turn further weakens the norm proscribing the use of chemical weapons and international disarmament and non-proliferation architecture as a whole. Mr. President, the seriousness of the recent allegations of the use of chemical weapons in Duma require this requires a thorough investigation using impartial, independent and professional expertise. I reaffirm my full support for the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, the OPC Double, and its fact-finding mission in undertaking the, undertaking the required investigation. The team is already in Syria. I am informed that their operations plan to visit the site is completed and that they are ready to go. I am confident they will have full access without any restrictions or impediments to perform their activities. Mr. President, allow me to report what I said yesterday, to repeat what I said yesterday. Syria today represents the most serious threat to international peace and security. In Syria, we see confrontations and proxy wars involving several national armies, a number of armed opposition groups, many national and international militia, foreign fighters from everywhere in the world, and various terrorist organizations. From the beginning, we have witnessed systematic violations of international humanitarian law, international human rights law, and international law to court in utter disregard of the letter and spirit of the United Nations Charter. For eight long years, the people of Syria have endured suffering upon suffering. Syrians have lived through a litany of horrors, atrocity crimes, sieges, starvation, indiscriminate attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure, the use of chemical weapons, forced displacement, sexual violence, torture, detention, and enforced... All right, we are monitoring very closely the U.N. Secretary General here, uh, reminding both sides in this debate, those who advocated and indeed did take military action in Syria, including the United States, France, and England, uh, as well as Russia, which opposed that action and demanded this emergency meeting, uh, that cooler heads should, be uh, should better prevail. Uh, and that there are inspectors on the ground right now in Syria, presumably on the ground right now, to confirm whether this attack in Duma was indeed a chemical attack uh, that does seem to be without debate right now. Uh, what a lot of people are debating is, is who was responsible 
for it. Of, of course, uh, the French uh, have, have confirmed, at least in their examination of this, that that was uh, you know, triggered by the Syrian government, by Assad's government. Uh, others are saying other players came to the fore to tempt this response. Um, he is simply saying, uh, let this continue and let's all be careful uh, before any other steps. Of course, the Russian ambassador is next up to speak. Ahead of that, Louisiana Republican Senator John Kennedy, who joins us on the phone. Senator, what did you think of the action that we took and the, 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 the appearance uh, from the president calling this mission accomplished? that it's done. This is all we're going to do. Well, I'm proud of my country, and I'm proud of my president. Uh, the, the use of chemical weapons is immoral. Uh, it's a violation of international law. Uh, we told Syria not to do it anymore. Syria did. So we responded on behalf of all civilized countries. And I want to thank the U.K. and, the Fran and France for joining with us. Um, our strikes were restrained. They were strategic. We targeted only serious stockpile of chemical weapons in their manufacturing facilities. We didn't target Russia or Iran. And, but I want to congratulate President Trump and our allies. Uh, the only way for this country to remain safe is to remain strong and use our military might when we have to. Um, if we don't do that, our enemies uh, won't respect us and our friends won't trust us. And let me say this about, about what Mr. Putin's people keep saying. Look, uh, Assad's a butcher. He did it. We don't know whether he did it with Mr. Putin and the Ayatollah's uh, knowledge or consent. The first, first Putin said it didn't happen. And then he said, well, UK did it. And I think next is coming the devil did it. I mean, they did it. And we did what we have to do. And I'm proud of my president and I'm proud of my country. Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, thank you, sir, very much. I do want to go back to the United Nations right now where the Russian ambassador there is uh, echoing a, a slightly different point of view, that this was unjustified uh, and provoked with the United States, France, and England on uh, a lie, on a myth, that those were chemical weapons approved by and supported by uh, the Syrians and the Russians. Let's listen. Nikki Haley is after him. Russian military personnel are assisting the legitimate government in its counterterrorism efforts. Through its actions, the United States makes an already catastrophic humanitarian situation in Syria even worse and brings suffering to civilians. In fact, the U.S. panders to the terrorists who have been tormenting the Syrian people for seven years, leading to a wave of refugees fleeing this country and the region. The current uh, escalation around Syria is destructive for the entire system of international relations. History will uh, deliver its verdict, and Washington already bears the heavy responsibility for the bloody outrage in Yugoslavia, Iraq, and Libya. End of quote. Russia has done everything possible to convince the United States and its allies to refrain from their military plans, which could lead to a new spiral of violence in Syria and destabilize the Middle East. The Secretary General of the UN at the meeting of the Security Council that we convened yesterday and today has expressed his concern about the way uh, events have developed. However, in Washington, London, and Paris, preferred to disregard calls to appeals to common sense. The United States and its allies continue to demonstrate blatant disregard for international law. Although as permanent members of the Security Council, they must be especially firm in, in uh, protecting the uh, provisions of the UN Charter. It was shameful to hear how, in justifying the aggression, an article of the US Constitution was mentioned. Now we have the greatest respect to the right of each state to respect their own founding law. However, Washington should learn, it's time for Washington to learn that the International Code of Behavior regarding the use of force is regulated by the United Nations Charter. It's interesting how the people of Great Britain and France, uh, what they will think that when they find out that their government is taking place, is taking part in an illegal military adventure by referring to the American Constitution. 
You're constantly, uh, you're constantly uh, tempted by neocolonialism. You uh, have nothing but disdain for the UN Charter and the Security Council, which you are, are unjustifiably trying to use uh, for your illicit aims. There's no serious work that you're doing in the Security Council. You don't, cons you don't consult us, and you mendaciously claim otherwise. You undermine the authority of the Security Council. As a pretext for aggression, you mention the alleged use of chemical weapons in the Syrian city of Duma. Representatives of Russia, after an inspection by our experts, uh, unequivocally stated that no such incident took place. Furthermore, there were people found who took part in this staging. And in fact, uh, the inspirers and organizers of that staging were foreign uh, uh, intelligence services. After this event, the Syrian authorities immediately invited experts from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons so that uh, they conduct a field mission to Duma in order to establish the facts. Quickly, uh, visa formalities uh, were resolved and guarantees of security were provided. At the time the strikes were conducted, experts were already in Syria and getting ready to begin their work. I want to recall to the members of the Security Council and everyone else that on the 10th of April, when our draft resolution on the secure work of the special mission of the OPCW was blocked, we were assured of the, the fact that such a document was not necessary. We were told that the mission, without any additional efforts by the Security Council, will go visit the, uh, the site and uh, conduct an investigation of the chemical incident. Now it is clear that we were absolutely right. Yesterday, some of our colleagues, some of them naively, some of them cynically, told us that the reason of the situation is supposedly a lack of an independent investigative mechanism. The aggression has shown that that is not the issue at all, as we stated. During last year's attack uh, against the Shirat Air Base, there was the joint investigative mechanism of the UN OPCW that did not prevent the United States from conducting a missile strike. Afterwards, the GIM, in fact, uh, uh, made sure that its conclusions coincided with the reasons for the American strike. We have said many times, you don't need any investigations. You didn't need them then, and you don't need them today. The organizers of the aggression didn't even wait for the elementary establishment of facts by an international organization which is authorized to do that. They supposedly determine everything for themselves and uh, determine who was guilty. After, given that they themselves, uh, uh, with uh, the uh, fighters that uh, uh, were under their control and uh, NGOs that they control, uh, they uh, disseminated uh, uh, all kinds of rumors using uh, social media. They, they confirmed this through uh, uh, so-called uh, secret uh, intelligence. Mythical, mythical seeking challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, the masks, or rather white uh, helmets, are, have once again fallen. We are already uh, used to the fact that when uh, they conduct their uh, doubtful geopolitical uh, policies, the countries that are aggressors already uh, blame the regime of Assad. Lately, uh, they tend to shift responsibility to on Russia, which, uh, according to their in interpretation, cannot uh, uh, control the dictator. All this is based on a scheme that is well, uh, that has been well tried. There's a provocation, there's mendacious, uh, uh, mendacious accusations, uh, verdict, and punishment. This is how you want international affairs to be conducted now? This is hooliganism uh, in international relations and not minor hooliganism, given that we're talking about major nuclear powers. Several strikes were conducted against the uh, scientific research center in Barza and Jamraya. Recently, two inspections by the OPCW were conducted with unimpeded access to all facilities. Experts didn't find any traces of activity that would contravene the, con uh, the Chemical Weapons Convention.
The uh, scientific uh, facilities in Syria are used only for peaceful activity, which is aimed at enhancing uh, uh, economic, the effectiveness of economic activity of Syria. You want Syria to have no economy at all? You want to uh, throw this country back into the Stone Age? Just a few years ago, this country was one of the most developed countries in the Middle East. You want, you want to finish off what your sanctions haven't uh, achieved yet? At the same time, you're trying, you, you are uh, shedding crocodile tears about the uh, suffering of uh, uh, ordinary Syrians. Well, ordinary Syrians which, who are tired of war and who are happy that their legitimate authorities uh, have uh, uh, freed their territory are not, you're, you're not interested in their suffering. Your aggressive actions contribute to worsening the humanitarian situation which you are so worried about, according to your statements. In 24 hours, you could stop the conflict in Syria. For this, Washington, London and Paris only have to give orders to, to their hand-picked terrorists to stop their fighting against the legitimate uh, uh, authorities and against their own people. The strikes were conducted against Syrian military airfields, which are being used in the course of an operation against terrorist organizations. It's a quite an original contribution to the combat against international terrorism, as Washington keeps repeating, which, as Washington keeps repeating, is the only goal of its military presence in Syria. We have serious doubts about that. It seems that it is clear that those who in the West who cover themselves with humanitarian rhetoric are trying to uh, uh, and trying to justify uh, their action in Syria by supposedly to uh, uh, defeat the jihadists are actually aiming at uh, uh, dividing, dismembering the country. This is confirmed by the fact that uh, uh, the United States uh, has refused to take part in uh, rebuilding the areas of uh, Syria that have been freed from the the jihadists. Lastly, your aggression is a major strike and threat against the possibility of continuing the political process under the UN auspices, which in spite of, of objective difficulties was moving forward at varying speeds. So, what were your constant references to the Geneva process worth? If you yourselves, uh, using your, your own action, your own actions, are uh, destroying that process, we call on the United States and its allies to immediately end the ag aggressive actions against Syria and to refrain from them in the future. We. Uh, we are putting forward for your attention a, a, dra a brief draft resolution which we will uh, demand a vote on at the end of this meeting. We uh, would like to address the members of the Security Council. Today is not the time to shirk, shirk your responsibilities. The whole world is looking at you. Take a principled stand. Thank you. I think All right, uh, just to give you what's going on here, uh, this is an emergency meeting at the United Nations going on, called by the Russians, who are just furious over this attack that was launched by the United States overnight uh, with the French. We've talked. We've talked about the victims in Duma. We've talked about the Assad regime and its patrons, Russia and Iran. We've spent a week talking about the unique horror of chemical weapons. The time for talk ended last night. We're here today because three permanent members of the United Nations Security Council acted. The United Kingdom, France, and the United States acted. Not as revenge, not as punishment, not as a symbolic show of force. We acted to deter the future use of chemical weapons by holding the Syrian regime responsible for its atrocities against humanity. We can all see that a Russian disinformation campaign is in full force this morning. But Russia's desperate attempts at, deflex at deflection cannot change the facts. A large body of information indicates that the Syrian regime used chemical weapons in Douma on April 7th. There is clear information demonstrating Assad's culpability. The pictures of dead children were not fake news. They were the result of the Syrian regime's barbaric inhumanity. And they were the result of the regime and Russia's failure to live up to their international commitments 
to remove all chemical weapons from Syria. The United States, France, and the United Kingdom acted after careful evaluation of these facts. The targets we selected were at the heart of the Syrian regime's illegal chemical weapons program. The strikes were carefully planned to minimize civilian casualties. The responses were justified, legitimate, and proportionate. The United States and its allies did everything we could to use the tools of diplomacy to get rid of Assad's arsenal of chemical weapons. We did not give diplomacy just one chance. We gave diplomacy chance after chance, six times. That's how many times Russia vetoed Security Council resolutions to address chemical weapons in Syria. Our efforts go back even further. In 2013, the Security Council passed a resolution that required the Assad regime to destroy its stockpile of chemical weapons. Syria committed to abide by the Chemical Weapons Convention, meaning it could no longer have chemical weapons on its soil. President Putin said Russia would guarantee that Syria complied. We hoped that this diplomacy would succeed in putting an end to the horror of chemical attacks in Syria. But as we see from the past year, that did not happen. While Russia was busy protecting the regime, Assad took notice. The regime knew it could act with impunity, and it did. In November, Russia used its veto to kill the Joint Investigative Mechanism, the main tool we had to figure out who used chemical weapons in Syria. Just as Russia was using its veto, the Assad regime used sarin, leading to dozens of injuries and deaths. Russia's veto was the green light for the Assad regime to use these most barbaric weapons against the Syrian people in complete violation of international law. The United States and our allies were not going to let that stand. Chemical weapons are a threat to us all. They are a unique threat, a type of weapon so evil that the international community agreed they must be banned. We cannot stand by and let Russia trash every international norm that we stand for and allow the use of chemical weapons to go unanswered. And just as the Syrian regime's use of chemical weapons last weekend was not an isolated incident, our response is part of a new course chartered last year to deter future use of chemical weapons. Our Syrian strategy has not changed. However, the Syrian regime has forced us to take action based on their repeated use of chemical weapons. Since the April 2017 chemical attack at Khan Sheikhoun, the United States has imposed hundreds of sanctions on individuals and entities involved in chemical weapons use in Syria and North Korea. We have designated entities in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa that have facilitated chemical weapons proliferation. We have revoked the visas of Russian intelligence officers in response to the chemical attack in Salisbury. We will continue to seek out and call out anyone who uses and anyone who aids in the use of chemical weapons. With yesterday's military action, our message was crystal clear. The United States of America will not allow the Assad regime to continue to use chemical weapons. Last night, we obliterated the major research facility that it used to assemble weapons of mass murder. I spoke to the president this morning, and he said if the Syrian regime uses this poisonous gas again, the United States is locked and loaded. When our president draws a red line, our president enforces the red line. The United States is deeply grateful to the United Kingdom and France for its part in the coalition to defend the prohibition of chemical weapons. We worked in lockstep. We were in complete agreement. Last night, our great friends and indispensable allies shouldered a burden that benefits all of us. The civilized world owes them its thanks. In the weeks and months to come, the Security Council should take time to reflect on its role in defending the international rule of law. The Security Council has failed in its duty to hold those who use chemical weapons to account. That failure is largely due to Russian obstruction. 
we call on Russia to take a hard look at the company it keeps and live up to its responsibilities as a permanent member of the Council and defend the actual principles the United Nations was meant to pr promote. Last night, we successfully hit the heart of Syria's chemical weapons enterprise. And because of these actions, we are confident we have crippled Syria's chemical weapons program. We are, prepa we are prepared to sustain this pressure if the Syrian regime is foolish enough to test our will. Thank you. I want to thank the representative of the United States for your statement. All right, uh, we're going to be listening to the French ambassador now. Uh, so the, the French, of course, part of that, uh, the, the three countries that did respond uh, to Syria's uh, buildup of chemical weapons and this chemical attack on Douma. Uh, Nikki Haley, who you just heard there, says it is ir irrefutable evidence that, they, that that indeed was the case of right now. Uh, the British ambassador to the United Nations and a change of the lineup here is speaking ab about this. I do want to into that. She was quite forceful in Q&A with reporters early, including a couple of testy exchanges with some who doubted uh, why this uh, attack was even necessary. Let's listen in. Some 15 miles west of Homs, where the regime is assessed to keep chemical weapons in breach of Syria's obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention. A full assessment has not yet been completed, but we believe the strikes to be successful. Furthermore, None of the British, US or French aircraft or missiles involved in this operation were successfully engaged by Syrian air defences. And there is also no indication that Russian air defence systems were employed. Our action was a limited, targeted and effective strike. There were clear boundaries that expressly sought to avoid escalation. And we did everything possible, including rigorous planning before any action was undertaken to ensure that we mitigated and minimized the impact on civilians. Together, our action will significantly degrade the Syrian regime's ability to research, develop and deploy chemical weapons and deter their future use. The UK Prime Minister has said, we are clear about who is responsible for the atrocity of the use of chemical weapons. A significant body of information, including intelligence, indicates the Syrian regime is responsible for the attack we saw last Saturday. Some of the evidence that leads us to this conclusion is as follows. There are open source accounts alleging that a barrel bomb was used to deliver the chemicals. Multiple open source reports claim a regime helicopter was observed above the city of Douma on the evening of 7th of April. The opposition does not operate helicopters, nor does it use barrel bombs. And reliable intelligence indicates that Syrian military officials coordinated what appears to be the use of chlorine in Douma on 7th of April. Mr. President, no other group could have carried out this attack. Indeed, Daesh, for example, does not even have a presence uh, in Douma. The Syrian regime has been killing its own people for seven years. Its use of chemical weapons, which has exacerbated the human suffering, is a serious crime of international concern as a breach of the customary international law prohibition on the use of chemical weapons, and this amounts to a war crime and a crime against humanity. Any state is permitted under international law on an exceptional basis to take measures in order to alleviate overwhelming humanitarian suffering. The legal basis for the use of force for the United Kingdom is humanitarian intervention, which requires three conditions to be met. Number one, that there is convincing evidence, generally accepted by the international community as a whole, of extreme humanitarian distress on a large scale, requiring immediate and urgent relief. I think the debates in this council and the briefings we have had from OCHA and others have proved that. Secondly, it must be objectively clear that there is no practicable alternative to the use of force if lives are to be saved. I think the vetoes have shown us that. And thirdly, the proposed use of force must be necessary and proportionate to the aim of relief of humanitarian suffering and must be strictly limited in time and in scope to this aim 
And I think we have heard, uh, both in my intervention and in Ambassador Haley's, uh, how that has also been met. The history of the Syrian conflict is a litany of threats to peace and in violations of international law. Security Council has met 113 times since the Syrian war started. It was therefore not for want of international diplomatic effort that we find ourselves in this position today. After a pattern of chemical weapons use since the outbreak of the conflict, Assad defied the international community in 2013 by launching a sarin gas attack on eastern Ghouta, which left more than 800 people dead. Despite the adoption of Resolution 2118, despite four years of patient engagement, Syria continues to use chemical weapons against its people and has failed to answer a long list of serious questions. The only conclusion we can reach is that Syria had not declared or destroyed all of its chemical weapons despite its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention. This is not assertion on our part, but a matter of record. And I draw the Russian, attention, the Russian ambassador's attention to his points about Barzan and Jumraya. The OPCW still has unanswered questions and discrepancies. He knows this, we all know this. The council was briefed by the OPCW direct general. Resolution 2118 decides in the event of non-compliance to impose measures under Chapter 7 of the Charter. Yet on 28th of February last year, when the UK together with France proposed a resolution taking measures under Chapter 7 short of the use of force, Russia vetoed. The very least this Council should have been able to do, Mr President, was to follow up on the findings of the Jim report by extending its mandate. Yet four times, Russia has vetoed different proposals from different council members to do just that. The Syrian regime and its supporters are responsible for the gravest violations of international humanitarian law in modern history. They have used indiscriminate weapons, notably barrel bombs and cluster munitions, against civilians, and they have deliberately targeted medical facilities and schools, as well as humanitarian personnel and civilian objects. They have used sieges and starvation as methods of warfare, accompanied by attacks on opposition-held civilian areas. The regime has persistently obstructed humanitarian aid and medical evacuations. Tens of thousands of people have been illegally detained, tortured and executed by the regime. This is one of the most serious challenges to the international non-proliferation regime we have ever faced. A state party has violated the Chemical Weapons Convention, it has defied the Security Council, and it has broken international law. Repeated attempts over several years to hold them to account have been met with Russian obstruction and resistance. We have repeatedly, in this Council, attempted to overcome this obstruction and without success. Mr President, we are faced with a litany of violations, no sense of guilt, no sense of regret, no sense of responsibility, a shameful record wrapped in a mix of denial, deceit and disinformation. Mr President, I would invite those like the Russian Ambassador who speak about the Charter to consider the following. It is hard to believe that it is in line with the principles and purposes of the Charter to use or condone the use of chemical weapons. And in the United Kingdom's view, it cannot be illegal to use force to prevent the killing of such numbers of innocent people. I will take no lessons, Mr President, in international law from Russia. Despite all this, Mr President, we would like to look forward. The United Kingdom, together with France and the US, will continue to pursue a diplomatic resolution to the Syrian crisis. My French colleague will say more about our work in a few moments. We believe it must comprise four elements. One, Syria's chemical weapons program must be ended and the chemical weapons stockpile.